Today we're going to be looking at the 2020 January Gold Problem 1, Time is Mooney. So in this question, Bessie is going to be going on a business trip, and from every city that she visits, there are going to be a bunch of one-way routes. So Bessie is going to want to basically earn the most amount of money possible on her trip, assuming that every time she visits a city, she gets a certain amount of money, and it takes one day to travel one road, and that the amount of days that she takes, she's going to have to subtract from her sum, meaning however much money she makes, she's going to have to subtract C, some number, times the number of days squared, in order to find how much money she makes. So let's go look at the algorithm for this question. So one of the things we can actually notice about this question is there have to be cycles. And this is just because since we have to start at 1 and then end at 1, that obviously means we're going to need to have some sort of cycles to return back. And so what this does is, if I were to do, say, a standard BFS, then what's going to happen is, if I didn't have an upper limit, I basically wouldn't go on forever. So if I had this, I would go to this, 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 and I would just keep going on forever. And so what we're actually going to do is, we're still going to do a BFS, or a DP, but we're going to find the maximum number of days possible. So if we have the best possible case, where we have C is 1, N is 1,000, T is 1,000, and then the value at each city as 1,000, we can basically draw out two different lines that portray what our cost and what our creation value can possibly be. And what that basically means is every time we add values, every time we add the M, at the best case, assuming every city, no matter what city we visit, we have 1,000, well, that line is basically going to look linear, because every time we're just going to add 1,000. And in the other case, our cost, since it's exponential, what's going to happen is, depending on this, assuming C is 1, so it's just the number of days, it's just going to increase exponentially. And so what this is actually going to do is, we're going to reach a point where, once they intersect, afterwards, no matter what happens, this line, at its best, so in most other cases where everything is not 1,000, it looks something more like this. Well, what's going to happen is it's never going to be possible to catch up to the cost. So this point right here is actually going to be 1,000. And this is just because 1,000 times 1,000 is 1 million. 1,000 squared is also 1 million. And so this point here is just going to be at 1,000 days. And after this point, even at the best possible co cost, we know that it's never going to be able to catch up the cost. Like 1,001 days, no matter what's going to happen, even if C is 1, X squared is bigger than anything we could possibly get. So after 1,000 days, there's no way we can get the biggest possible answer, since the amount of money we make is always going to be less than the cost based on the number of days. So knowing this, what we're basically going to do is we're going to run a BFS where we're going to keep looping through until we reach the 1,000th day. And so if I were to just do a standard BFS, like an actual one, then it would still explode because if we have two different paths to here, well, one path to here, it's going to go through all its children, and that's just going to be what, however long this is. And then if we have another path to here, it's going to do that same action again. And so in order to decrease this cost, what we're actually going to do is we're going to make it faster by basically running a BFS where we store a set of every level. And so uh, in the following bits, I'm going to be using level and day synonymously because we're just going to assume we have a f almost tree. The actual graph is going to look sort of more like this, but I'm going to portray it as a tree where every level is just going to be a new day. And so for every day, we're actually just going to store a set and what this is basically going to do is we're just going to be able to kind of simulate a BFS where we can see which nodes we can access on the certain days. So we start at node 1, we keep going here, and then once we reach this, what's going to happen is these nodes are all going to be on level 2. And then once we do this, well, since this node appears twice and we're using a set, this is why it's important to use a set, we're only going to have three nodes on node 3. And then what we're actually going to do is we're going to loop through. So our code is just going to look like loop through the levels. And then we're going to loop through the nodes that are in this current level. So we're going to have a queue for the nodes. And this queue is going to start off pushing back 
node one, and then we're just going to push its children in and stuff for later. And then what's basically going to happen is we're going to loop through the children of the node. And for each one of these children, what we're actually going to do is we're just going to update the value of this child. And so for this question, we're actually going to store a 2D DP, where the first dimension is going to be the node, and the second dimension is going to be the day. And it's going to store the maximum possible value. And again, this is just because if I have two paths, and since we're going day by day, we know it's going to be the same day. So for this one day, if we have two paths that lead to it, we're just going to pick the one with the greater cost. So this DP value is just going to pick whichever one has the greater cost, and it's just going to store the greatest possible cost of being currently at this node on this day. And so again, our actual graph is going to look something like this, which means we know that they're going to be pushed back multiple times which is why our node and then the day is going to change the value. And so we're going to update the child values by basically updating this DP value, and it's just going to be the max of itself or the previous DP value, so DP parent and then day minus one, plus the M value, or I'll go more into this in the code. So again, we're gonna be using a queue to basically store the various levels. And so what I'm actually gonna do more specifically is Every time we reach a level, let's say I'm currently on this level, level 2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my queue and I'm going to keep popping all of the values on this level and I'm going to push these into a set. I'm going to push all the children into a set because again, no duplicates. And then afterwards, I'm going to take that set and I'm going to push all of those values into the queue again. And then that's pretty much the bulk of the algorithm. And for a quick optimization, what we're going to do is we could have a DP array where one dimension is just 1,000, or the number of days. Or what we can do instead is we can actually kind of have a rotating buffer. And what that basically means is if I have DP n minus 1, n minus 2, wait, sorry, n minus 2, n minus 1, and then n, what we can actually realize is I only really need the information from the previous day because all we're looking at is DP parent day minus 1. So what we're actually just going to do instead is we're going to store a DP array with only two. So the second dimension is just going to be size two. And we're just going to kind of rotate back and forth where it's just going to have the current one based on whether or not it's odd or even is going to be stored here. So DP, so the day n is going to be stored here and then minus one here. And then once we reach where in the next one, then it, we're just going to move it up. So it's just going to become n plus 1 here, so this is current and this is not current. I'll show more of this more specifically in the code, but you could just ignore all of the mod and turn it into a 1000 size array instead. So let's go look at the code for this question. So I've set up a bit in the program. We have the basic variables, we have a vector of the m from the input, and then we have the adjacency list for the various edges or roads and the dp array. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize everything and just read in the input. So we're just going to read in the input here. And then I'm going to initialize the values. And so for my DP, I'm going to initialize this with negative 1, meaning that we have not visited yet. And then over here, I'm just going to initialize this to 0, 0. Now for the BFS, I'm going to create a queue. And this is just going to keep track of my BFS. And so what I'm actually going to do is we're going to loop through the various levels. And so like we explained earlier, what's basically going to happen is since we know the maximum amount of days possible is going to be 1000, so there's no way based on the constraints of the problem, we're going to need to be traveling for more than 1000 days. I'm just going to loop through the various levels where each level is going to represent a new day. And then for each of these levels, I'm going to find the next level through a set. And so what I'm going to do is my current queue is going to store the nodes in my current level. So on day zero or day one, that's just going to be the starting node or city one. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to create a set. And then this set is going to have next level nodes. And this is just going to contain the nodes that are going to be apparent in the next day. So basically, we're going to push all of the children nodes. And then over here, we're going to be looping through my queue. Over here, this is going to be pushing zero because I've subtracted here and it's all zero based now. But what we're going to do is we're just going to loop through all of the nodes in the current level, so in my queue. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to check, we're going to pop it out, 
and then we're going to loop through all of the children for this node. And so for all of the children, or the next, what we're actually going to do is we're going to update the dp value for that child. So for our dp here, we're actually going to create an optimization for this array. And so what I could do is I could do a 1000 instead of 2 by n dp array, and that would be fine. But in order to optimize this slightly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save space by basically creating a dp array with only two values. And so we're just going to kind of move the buffer up. And what this means is when I have, I'm currently on n, then the previous is just going to be n minus one. And so what I'm actually going to do is based on whether or not the level is odd or even, I'm just going to make the dp array and I'm going to make that value odd or even. So when level or the current day is odd, then I'll be, then this current day is going to be represented by dp1. And when this level is even, this current day is going to be represented by dp0. And so to find the previous day, all I have to do is level minus one mod two. And so all this is to say, you could kind of just ignore the mod and then use it normally. But for this optimization, I'm going to have it mod. And so I'm going to loop through the children, and then I'm going to update the dp value. And it's just going to be the max of itself or the max of the previous plus the m value of the city. And so my dp value is not going to store the cost. It's just going to store the amount of m values that I add. And then down here, I'm going to insert it into next level nodes. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all of the next level nodes and push it into the queue. So it is important that I make sure that I insert it into something before pushing it in the queue for this strategy, because otherwise this would just keep running and I would have a lot of duplicates making it exponentially explode. Basically, it would be too slow. And so at the very end, I'm going to factor in the cost again. And since I'm looping by the current day, I'm just going to make the answer the max of itself and dp0, so the starting node or dp or the node one, I'm going to make it dp0 and then the current level minus the cost, which is just c times the current day squared. And so the code for this is relatively simple. And at the end, I'm just going to output my answer. And that's the end of our program.